Hi everyone, we are back. And so now we are going to work with our discrete Fourier transforms and calculate our harmonic coefficients. Um, and because we're using a discrete Fourier transform, we can no longer use our integrals. And instead we have to basically work with a summation. And we're gonna change our continuous function y of t into a discrete function y r of t, where r indicates essentially the count of, or the index of my, uh, basically my total number of particles in, or a number of points, excuse me, uh, in my discrete, you know, uh, data set, uh, capital N, and we're going to sum that and count and basically loop this function all the way to the total number of my points, capital N. You'll notice here additionally that now in our continuous Fourier transform, our harmonic coefficients uh, went from n equals zero to infinity. But now we're limited to this n over two, why? Well, previously we said that the maximum frequency that we can resolve in our discrete Fourier transform is our Nyquist frequency. And we know we can relate our delta F to our Nyquist frequency, and so the number of harmonics will effectively be uh, n over two times our Nyquist, um, where, you know, your Nyquist, you can replace that with F sub S over two, uh, and then you could kind of work with those. So that is gonna be uh, the value or what we're gonna be working with here. So uh, we will have N over two number of harmonics. So let's look at a discrete data set. So here's our data points here. We have time data as well, and we can now start to work with our function. So let's go ahead, begin is equal to length of my data, my T dat. Oops, let's look at my t data set. This is not a periodic function. So this is my delta t. Uh, so I could go f sub s is equal to this. My, uh, basically, delta t is equal to t dat. One. My period will be n times delta t. And my, uh, begin. And then I also have my del f is equal to um, one divided by capital T here. So I've calculated all those key values here, and now we can start to kind of loop our code. And actually, we could do this ourselves up here. Um, so if I want to calculate my a sub n, my harmonic coefficient, my a sub n, that's going to be equal to, um, as we see here, 2 over big N. Actually, we could write this code ourselves. So I can go ahead and make a table, because I need to sum, first of all, my debt. I'm going to look from R times cosine of two times pi times r times n, which is gonna be, we'll just leave that here for now, divided by big N, and we're gonna loop that from r goes from one to uh, big N. And then we are gonna total that. And then we are going to multiply that, oops, excuse me. We're gonna multiply that times two over uh, big N here, and then We'll now do a table where we can then go from n comma one to uh, basically big N, big N, oops, divided by two. And so this would be our a sub n. And the only thing we would change here, and we can go to from zero, let's start from zero. Actually, let's start from zero here. That would be our a sub n right here, oops. Our b sub n would look like this. B sub n is here, and then now we can go through here. And now we can start to look at our Fourier spectrum. So uh, we already have our del f, or our frequency spectrum, excuse me. Del f, go from length of a n, oops, let's go to a n. Here, let's just square a n, let's just square b n, let's do length of a n. We can see here's our frequency spectrum. And one of the other ways you can look at this in Mathematica, oops, uh, spectrogram, uh, let's see, oops, our f sub s, uh, our f sub s should not be that, excuse me, our f sub s should be one divided by t dat, my apologies. And this makes sense, our sampling frequency, and that should make sense because our sampling frequency should be 2000 hertz. We should only plot to 1000. We see the mirror symmetry, so that tells us we're on the right track. We can look at our spectrogram, and our spectrogram is giving us basically frequency on our y-axis. We're only plotting until our Nyquist frequency, time on the x-axis, and the value of our, basically, you could kind of think of it as your frequency spectrum, your power spectrum, uh, as such. So, um, 
you can also kind of uh, do your Fourier series as well. Um, however, we can do and we can look at our Fourier analysis using Mathematica and Periodogram Array. So we've got our data. I could do my Fourier analysis of my data as such. So here we see that it is doing, um, it's treating this discrete data set and we're looking at uh, basically real components and we are looking at imaginary components. Um, this is another way to represent essentially your Fourier um, harmonics effectively. Um, to get our frequency spectrum or our power spectrum, you could do periodogram array. And when we do that, we can go ahead and see here's our old periodogram, here's our current periodogram, and we can still see the same type of data set here. So, uh, much nicer, much quicker. I would suggest that you do that um, here. The magnitudes are different, um, as you can see here, and we see a little bit of a shift, but um, that's effectively what we're looking at. So, uh, that's a very nice and attractive way, essentially, to see that data. So, periodogram array, and we can look at that. You could also, again, inverse Fourier analysis, and we could kind of recover our original plot as well. So, you could Fourier analysis the data, we could inverse it, and then we're ready to go. So you can do all of this with all types of different types of discrete data sets. So you could choose which way to um, utilize it, but periodogram array is a nice way to kind of look at it. So next time we'll look at how do we actually analyze sound um, examples, and we'll move on to images and then Laplace transforms. All right, see you all next video. Thanks.